the question is, am I live? If I'm live, comment, say hello, wave, <laughs> see if I can see you. Yeah, welcome along guys. Um, it's just a, an informal chat about what's coming up in the next six months or so. And just stuff that I think, for those of you that like trance mediumship, so this is for the spooky weirdos like me. Um, yeah, a little chat. Say hello. Have a cup of tea. Cheers. So it's just an opportunity to share, you know, with what's happening and, um, you know, celebrate our weirdness and um, just tell you what other stuff's coming up and also just to share about resources from other people. Let me see, where's the comment there? What comment have we got? Uh, da -da. Comments, no comments. Okay. Hi, Avril. Yeah, so um, I'm waiting for some people to join in and um, we'll get going. So what's new with you guys? How's it going? How's it going for you, Avril? What's the weather like in Ireland? Raining? Don't tell me it's raining. It's always dry and sunny there, isn't it? Hmm. Hi, Pia. Pia from Sweden. Yes, we have Ireland and Sweden. Yay. Wish I knew how to get the comments to go in a different part of the screen. Um, oh, pop out. Oh. Uh oh. Oh dear. Now I've lost the screen. There we go. <laughs> Bring it back. What have I done? No. Who else have we got? Okay. So we'll wait for some more people just to join us and we'll get going. So. What's new then, guys? Talk to me. Comment. What are you interested in? What's what's um, exciting you about your trance or bothering you? What do you want to know more of? What don't I cover? Oh dear, maybe I should have asked that question. What don't I cover? Don't say everything. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. How do... This is it. So for those of you that do the Facebook Lives, I wonder how we get comments to appear at the side of my screen. That'd be handy. I wonder how that works. Anyone know? Anybody know? Let's have a play. Okay. It's very bad there. Hi, Raven. Raining. Hey, hi Kev. Hi Linda. De -de -ding. Interesting drumming today. Oh, how did it go then? Tell me more. So you're with um, Les doing a bit of drumming today, Raven, if I remember correctly from your post earlier. Kev. Trance like state and connection. Well, this is what I said to you. Do you remember when we had um, one of the sessions that you're attending now, Raven? We said one of the things, you know, we can use the drumming for is getting into that. Hi, Annie. You can get into that altered state, can't you? Um, close your eyes. Drum. Hi, Laura. Close your eyes. Drum. Make that connection to the spirit world. Just connect to your own soul. Connect to the environment around you. And... It can just take you on a journey, it really can. And I think sometimes when you just say, Do you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, sometimes they're the they're the best um they're the best times. Frame rate? Oh my goodness, don't talk to me about that. I've no idea what you're on about there. Hi Judy. Another one that loves the trance. Excellent. And Annie. Annie, are you doing any trance? I know you like it. But do you do anything with it? Okay. So. 
A lot of these people that are joining me are spooky weirdos. Yay! We need as many as possible. It's um, it's what it's all about. Yeah, it is what it's all about. Um, Trance-like state. Yeah. So, did you enjoy it, Raven? That's the big question. I think I know what the answer will be. But um, you sense sense this shamanic spirit healer. Oh, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And it's just nice when you can um, you can kind of make that connection and you start to be aware of if who's with other people and you kind of know that you're not alone, but then again, nor are the people that work with you so or work with others. So you can kind of make that connection, not just to you, but to the people around you. And I guess, I mean, that's that's what I do. You're normal, Kev. You're many things, mate, but you're not normal. Thank goodness. <laughs> if you were normal, I don't think we'd be friends. Excellent. So you're doing stuff with it, Annie. What are you doing in particular? That's good to hear. Oh, not at the moment. That we are. Right. Yes, we're weird. I think, Annie, you're saying that that we are weird. I imagine so. It's all I've got. Weirdness is all I've got. So um, let's just let's go with that. Okay. Right, let me see my screen at the top there. Okay, so let's speak about stuff that's available to you. Resources. Loads of you are interested in trance. You love it. I love it. So some of the things that you can kind of use, what we've got in the background there on the wall, look, drums. How can we get into an altered state? How can we use trance? Or what, can you, what methods can we use to get into a trance state? So Raven has quite rightly commented earlier, got into a trance-like state by doing drumming. So those drums on the wall, um, they're great ways that you can, you know, use them yourself to to get yourself into an altered state. And it doesn't have to be any for any particular reason other than to make a connection to you know your guides and inspirers to take yourself on a journey to kind of explore um, your mind, I guess, or you know, your awareness, your consciousness. Um, so that's a great way of um, of doing it. And um, so it's a great resource. I mean, the if you buy, if you just see behind me, sorry, you see the blue one in the background? That's a Remo drum, it's called a Remo drum. And I think you can pick them up for about maybe 70 pounds-ish, you know, for about a 16 inch drum. And the great thing about those is that you can play them in the pouring rain, in the cold weather, hot sun, and they don't distort, they don't lose their um, vibrancy, their, you know, their, their strength. Whereas with the animal hide drums, because the skin is natural, um, when it's hot, it becomes very taut. When it's cool and damp, it then goes saggy. And that can make the drums unplayable. So the issue is they're beautiful and they've, they've come from an animal. And, you know, unless obviously you're against that, then, you know, you can connect to the spirit of that animal, you know, whose, whose energy you're connecting to. But obviously the downside is, you need certain conditions to play them, otherwise they just they just don't work. You know, they're useless. But that's kind of one of the things that you can use. Now, you can use things like your flutes. I know Kev, I try to play flute um, quite badly. <laughs> but luckily I know people that play them well. So Kev, you play your flute, and that would probably get you into a trance state, I should imagine. Um, there's, you know, the fair, weird is cool. Yeah, you're damn right it is. <laughs> hey, hi Christian, greetings from Vienna. Cool, we're getting people from all over. Chanting, yeah. Chanting is a great way of doing it. I mean, you know, I've been to, um, in meditations where we've like chanted the Om, and, um, or Om Mani Padme Hum. <laughs> yeah. I'm good in my own mind. No, I'm not even good in my own mind, um, which is terrible. Yes, you've booked tickets for Wadrunner next Sunday in Cambridge. I blame you. Good. I may see you there then. Hi, Val. 
Hi, Helen. See, these are all people that celebrate their trance with me, and God bless them for doing it. You know, some are repeat offenders. Um, so it's, um, it's just good that, you know, we're kind of, we're sharing something we love together. And that's kind of what it's all about. We're coming together like a tribe. You know, we're finding our tribe and our vibe. And um, that's really cool. And um, so it's nice to see you, Val. I hope you're keeping all right. Um, mind you, I saw you. When was it? So it was a week ago. Okay, so let's talk about other ways, other resources. Now, we can use... Um, like guided meditations and um, exercises to improve our link to the spirit world. And there's a wonderful lady who many of you will be aware of called Helen DeVita. Now, Helen, is a she was a tutor at the Arthur Findlay College, for those of you that are be familiar with it, which is most of you. An incredibly um, empathic, warm, kind and knowledgeable person it makes you really feel that you matter when you work with her. Now I did have the privilege of having a week of trance tuition with her um, a couple of years ago and it was wonderful, it really was. Now she has put onto CD, the CD, what am I in, 1995? Um, she has got on CDs probably downloads now guided meditations, exercises to connect you to um, the spirit world, to allow you to feel your own energy and to kind of take you on a journey when there is only you. And sometimes we don't have a group. So we want to make a connection to the spooky world, as we call it. And there's only us. So what can we do? Now, Helen has got... Um, quite a few resources. There's a really good one that I was listening to yesterday. It is um, called The Infinite Mind. Now you can go to her website www.helendevita which is H-E-L-E-N-D-A-V-I-T-A dot com and there is many things on here. There's um, what we got now? Let me just double check my um, double check my message because there's some specific stuff that I wanted to mention to you. So let me just find it here. Okay, right. Okay, so touching the infinite mind. So I'll just clarify that it's called touching the infinite mind, and this is specifically to get a really good strong connection in the trance state. Now um, there are courses on there where you can explore your connection to the spirit world and also Helen's got a bundle where you get four CDs and called the complete trance enchantments so she breaks down the the way that you connect in different processes and goes through that with you and guides you and there's music and you know you know that sort of stuff but the great thing about it is it's just easy plug in hi Lena just plug in your um, plug in your headphones, sit back, relax. Helen guides you into where you need to be, and it's a wonderful resource. So I want to I want to tell you about you know people like Helen, where you can find stuff and you can still do development on your own. So please don't feel that I have heard people say that all oh, trance can't be developed on your own. You need people to sit for you. You need to have people watching you to bring you back. That's just not the case. I don't know why people say it, but they do. So let me say here and now, you do not need anyone to help you go into trance. Your spirit team are there. They're your guides. They guide you for a reason. What you need to do is to set um, your intention. You need to have an understanding of how the process works. And it is a lot more simple than you think. Um, so please do listen to, you know, the trance enchantments and touching the infinite mind. You know, Helen has some very, very reasonably um, priced um, resources on her website. Um, there's YouTube videos. There's lots of stuff. And those many decades of wisdom that she has, she shares, you know, freely with us. And when she does charge, it's very, very reasonable. So please do 
um, look at Helen's website. You know, she's a great lady. So let's let's take advantage of of her her wisdom. I think that's a wonderful um, you know place to end that on. But here's another thing. I was talking to Helen yesterday, and she said she has a book in the pipeline that she's looking. Um, yeah, Lena, that's really cool, isn't it? So your guys, they're not daft. You've said that Lena has said that if I ask them to bring me back in 30 minutes, they do right on time every time. How cool is that? So your guides aren't just sitting there going, oh, we don't know what to do. What should we do? They're intelligent people. You know, they are, they were humans. Maybe some of them weren't humans. That is a different story. But the point is they have an understanding and intelligence. They're not, you know, just sitting on a fluffy cloud waiting for something nice to happen. They're actively helping you with your development or just sitting waiting for you to ask them. So please do ask them. They need your permission. You are the boss amongst the others. So Helen has a book and that she is in the process of compiling. And, you know, she said to me, and I hope, I hope I'm not going to get my wrist slapped for saying this, it will be called, or something along the lines of, Modern Trance Mediumship. And it's about learning through the self, which is, it is a journey of self-discovery. Um, and it's not going to be a you do it this way only guide. So I think that'll be wonderful when it comes out. She didn't give me a date about when that may happen. Um, she just said that it's something that she's working on at the minute, you know, those thoughts are obviously in her mind um, about what she'd like to do. So please do sign up to her website, you know, get updates so that you know when something like that does come into, um, into fruition. So a great resource. Now, there are lots of stuff. There's lots of stuff coming up um, that I'm doing. And also uh, a good friend of mine, Jan Higgins. Some of you know Jan. You've done courses or workshops with her before. And you're right, Lena, she does have a very, very soothing voice. Yeah, Val, so she spoke spoke about it yesterday. So that no, that's really lovely. So there is there is stuff coming up. Now, let me go through some dates. I've got a lot of things scribbled down. So bear with me while I try to make sense of my spider-like handwriting. So the where is where are we um okay so in april jan higgins has kindly agreed to run something that i kind of felt needed to be discussed needed to be spoken about and that is dealing with the dark side now we're not talking about darth vader um so yeah you love jan yeah i think we all love jan so we're not talking about darth vader here what we're doing is you know, very often people say, oh, the spirit world is love and light. And the spirit world does have a lot of love. There is a lot of light out there, but it's not all love and light. So I thought it'd be really good if we had a short workshop. It's just three hours. And where Jan, because she has very, very, very many years of experience, where Jan will discuss, you know, what it's like to you know, deal with the dark side and, and how we can make the experience of connecting to um, the spirit world a safe one. Because we do need to be mindful that, you know, there are times where um, we can be influenced by negative energy. And I want you guys to have an understanding of that. And maybe you already do. And um, so that you're prepared if you know, it should be that you become aware of stuff, you know, that makes you feel uncomfortable. So that's on Saturday, the 23rd of April. That will be a Zoom session. It's something that I'm organising and Jan is facilitating. So it will be on Zoom and that's going to be priced at £30, you know, which I think for three hours tuition from Jan is very reasonable. But look, if there's people out there, you know, that would like to attend, but, you know, money's tight, please send me a message and let's have a chat because I don't want to um, I don't want to for you to lose that opportunity you know if there is a need um, for, for you to attend and you know things are tight so please please do send me a message and um, 
and we'll see what we can do to help. So that's Saturday the 23rd of April from 2 till 5 p.m. Obviously all of these times are UK times because I'm in the UK. So yeah, Linda, you're seeing Jan tomorrow a week at Maiden. Oh, you lucky thing. So yeah, all of the all of, all this time for this dealing with the dark side, that is Saturday the 23rd of April, Val, 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. And that will be a, yeah, as I've said, a Saturday. So hopefully those those times would work, you know, for the majority. And I know it won't work for everyone. So that is dealing with the dark side. Let's put that one to rest. Now, there are there is another workshop coming up. I say coming up, it's late May and early June, and it is called Mastering Mental Mediumship. So, for those of you that like to do one-to-one -one readings or to work, you know, with people, you know, on an evidential mediumship basis, or well, you're just curious about how does this work? How do we connect to the spooky world? How can I get information? So let's, let's explore it. Now, Jan, in her many years, has done tens of thousands, quite literally tens of thousands of readings, and she has accrued a great deal of knowledge. So she is happy to share that with us. Now, this workshop will be Saturday the 28th of May, the first workshop, so it's a two-parter. Saturday the 28th of May from 2 till 5 p.m. Then it, the next one will be two weeks later, so part two, so you do need to attend both parts. Part two will be Saturday the 11th of June from 2 till 5 p.m. So there's a pattern forming here with times. So there's a two week break, which I think is good because you get that chance to let the information soak in, maybe have a little practice, come back in two weeks later, speak to it about Jan, or speak to Jan about it and say, you know, this is what I tried, this is what I didn't understand, you know, can you help? And Jan is so patient, thank goodness. Um, she will do everything she can to help. Now, again, these workshops will be £30 for each workshop. So the mental mediumship one will be £60 in total because it's um, two three hour workshops but again if there are difficulties in you know sort of covering that cost please do please do let me know and i'll see if i can help what's that lane i've been doing trance for the last few years and just getting started with mental evidential mediumship but it intimidates the heck out of me <laughs> well me me too <laughs> me too. But yeah, trance is fine. Close my eyes and allow guys to speak through me. Happy with that. But bringing someone's loved ones through, I'm like, Ugh! <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Why do I worry? So look, maybe that will be something that you guys are interested in. Um, now, from past experience, we're usually looking uh probably no more than 10 to 12 people it will be on zoom um but jan will want to watch all of us so it's not about the numbers it's about the people getting good tuition good learning okay so it may be something that you want to consider but do not sit on the fence too long because um i know that sometimes i've advertised one of these on a saturday and by the monday we're full so if you're interested, send me a message. I'll probably ask for a small deposit to, you know, secure your place. But, you know, we use PayPal, you know, we can do bank transfer and see how it goes. But again, it's a great possibility if you're interested in developing your evidential mediumship. So maybe, Lena, that's something that interests you. And who knows? Let's see where it goes. Next. Okay, now in July, Jan is also a trance medium. She's a physical medium, she's a mental medium, she's a healer, she's a reverend. Or she likes to call herself sometimes the very irreverent Jan Higgins. But she's got a beautiful, wonderful sense of humour. Yeah, Judy, absolutely, it will be for, for everyone. Because are we ever the finished article? So, yeah, absolutely, it's for beginners. Um, I will be 
taking my place. If there's space, if there's not, then I will give up a space that I may take for someone else. But absolutely, it's for beginners um, and all aspects, all, all levels of um, awareness are encouraged to attend. Um, there's always something to learn. Um, at least I think there is anyway. So on the 2nd of July, Jan is going to be doing a, a trance demonstration. So this will be at 7.30 p.m. UK time. And the cost for that will be eight pounds, which I think is really reasonable. Now, Jan is a tutor of trance. She demonstrates it. Um, she works with it and has done for many, 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 many years. A wonderful medium, a wonderful lady. So I said to her, you know, Jan, how about, you know, doing a demonstration? Um, it, it is just good for, for those of you that are interested in trance, you know, like Lena and Val and Judy and all of the people that have joined me so far. It's good to, it's good to observe how other people work, to watch them, to, to have the opportunity to ask different guides questions that are in your mind. You know, you're thinking to yourself, you know, what did the spirit world think about whatever? love what do they think about war what do they think about compassion you know are there other species out there all of those questions there's an opportunity to ask the spirit world and let's see what they say guides do not necessarily all agree with each other so it may be that a question that has been answered by someone else's guide in a certain way may get a different response because again these are different people aren't they they're different energies you know, you're, you're speaking to wisdom from many different places. And so I think that'll be really popular. Now, with that one, the numbers can be greater because, of course, it is going to be, um, there will be a philosophical aspect to it. But there will also then be the opportunity to ask questions. So it's a QA. and a And obviously, I'll be hosting it. And... You know, at some time there will be that opportunity. People will put their hand up and say, I want to ask a question. I'll unmute you. You'll ask your question. Spirit World will respond and let's see where it goes. So, yeah, Kev, that'd be great to see you, buddy. So that is going to be the 2nd of July. So it's a little bit, you know, it's a good five months down the line or four months. What else do we have? Uh, right. Trance healing. Yeah, you're interested, yeah. Judy, you surprised me. Of course you're interested. Okay. Um, now, we haven't got definite dates for this, this particular bit, but in mid to late summer, so we're kind of talking July, August time, we're also going to have um, Jan doing a trance healing workshop. Again, this will be a two-parter, so it'll be three hours um, on a Saturday, two to five, and then three hours again a couple of weeks later. And that is going to be um, using your trance mediumship, using that altered state of consciousness to connect to the healing team that are with you, to give you an insight into the other ways that you know we can use trance mediumship. So it doesn't have to be about allowing philosophy it can be about working with the clairvoyance. It can be about being an artist. It can be about developing physical phenomena. You know, you can use that altered state of consciousness. So the trance healing course is very popular. I've run it probably three or four times before. Um, they do get well booked. They're really popular. People enjoy them. And again, it's it's an opportunity for you to kind of try something else maybe and just say to yourself, actually, I've not considered the healing side of working with trance, but it's something that appeals to me. Or you may say, it's not my thing. You know, that, that choice is yours. So let me check. I do believe that is all that we've got coming up with Jam, but that's quite a lot. Now, there's also... She's hosting, or well, I'm hosting, two physical mediumship workshops in May and September. But the reason that I'm not mentioning them, other than to say that they're going, is that they are both fully booked. 
So that is a weekend where we are sitting in seance conditions. So it's not online, it will be in person. Um, it's in my hometown. And we will be sitting together for the production of phenomena to see what the spirit world can do when we sit together with harmony, with love, and to see where it goes. Now, for those of you that already booked on it, you will understand that there are no guarantees. Um, it is a, it's an ongoing process, but you never know, stuff might happen. So that is happening in May and September. Take a breath, I think my tea's getting cold now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's getting pretty cold. Ooh. Right, okay. So, where else are we at? Let's see. Bum, bum, bum. Has anyone got any questions about what I've mentioned so far? Anything that you want to mention, guys? Always happy to kind of talk about that. But from my own perspective, what have I got coming up? Now, in April, for those of you that are interested in developing your trance mediumship and you want a safe space, you want a space where you can come together with like-minded folks, in six three-hour structured lessons where we come together, we explore trance and altered states of consciousness. And we discuss what is it, how do we get it going, how do we know it's genuine? You know, how can we use it? So we're thinking about the clairvoyance, we're thinking about trancing our guides, trancing other people's guides, trancing people's loved ones, using it for trance healing. So we explore the many facets of working in an altered state, about understanding how do I know that I'm connected to my guides? How do I know that they're with me, that they're responding to me? How can I build that relationship with them? So in April, I will be starting a new um, set of six three-hour sessions. Now, they start on a Sunday. So there are two options that you have if you wish to join me. You can join me in the morning session, which is from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. So this is UK time. And we meet every two weeks unless something comes up, but it's every two weeks at the same time, same day, and we go through that process of learning. That's what it's about. The sessions are recorded. You get to watch them back. You can repeat the exercises. You can connect with different people, but you'll be working with the same people as a group every two weeks. Now, if you're interested, send me a message let me know many of the people on these um on this chat now have joined me or are currently with me in one of the various groups that i run and i think in the vast majority of cases that it's been a very positive experience for people that you've enjoyed working with me yes i'm not quite um straight down the line in the sense of you know everything's very teacher student I like for it to be relaxed. I like you to know that you're supported, that your opinion matters, and that you are unique in how you work. I encourage your uniqueness, and I think that's very important. The other option is that we still meet on the same day, but I also have a class that is tailored to people that are maybe across the water in the States. And we would meet at 5 p.m. till 8 p.m. UK time, so for East Coast, that would then be midday. And if you're on the West Coast, that would be 9 a.m. start, which isn't too bad. That's not too early. At least if you've got dogs like me, you're probably up at six o'clock anyway. So again, we meet every two weeks. We get together, we have fun, we have learning, we explore. My guides will speak to you. They will you know, discuss stuff. We will have opportunities to work together as a group in pairs in the Zoom room. And it's it's just a great opportunity. You know, they're very reasonably priced and I can give you more details should you wish. So let me know. Now, okay. Um, yeah, I will post the dates later, Raven. Get a thermo cup. 
Yeah, unfortunately, Kev, I ain't got my thermic cup. I've got one downstairs. Am I going to post the list? Yeah, I will do. I will post the list, Lena. Um, yeah, so... Oh, that's getting really lukewarm now. Ooh. Okay, so also what I want to do, to give something back, um, there'll be a free workshop too. So if you're kind of exploring the journey of, do I have spirit guides? If I do, who are they? How do I know they're with me? How can we tell? How can we find out some information about them? So sometime in April or May, as soon as I have a free Saturday, I'm just going to do a free Saturday workshop. A um, couple of three hours, um, probably from somewhere like um, probably 12 till 3 or 11 till 2. And it's just going to be about a, a, a guide connection workshop. Connect to your guides. Connect to your inspirers. Go through some journeys to meet them. You know, do some exercises about understanding how that you can how you can understand that you're connecting to them, and giving you some confidence in yourself and your awareness. So, you know, for those of you that you know want to do a guide connection workshop, it will be free of charge. So, your only question is, have I got the time? Can I be bothered? And um, do I want to know? You don't have to. Does it matter if you know who your guides are? No. If you're nosy like me, it does. You want to know. You want to know those answers. Because that's just kind of how I am. I think most of us are. So that's going to be at some time April or May. Uh, I think I've covered a fair bit there. Now, I do have ongoing circles. Ongoing circles. So we're not talking geometry here. We're talking about ongoing trance development circles. So thanks, Raven. Thank you for joining me. Um, ongoing trance circles. So on a Friday, every two weeks, you see there's a bit of a format here. Every two weeks on a Friday, I do run a session or a, 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 a series, that's the word, a series of six two-hour sessions whereby we're getting a regular group of people now where we come together every two weeks and we practice what we learn in the workshops. We get together, we support each other, we encourage each other, we go into the Zoom rooms, we, we do like a clairvoyant reading, we maybe you know do the spirit link, or we allow our guys to feel into the energy of the person we're working with and offer them words of inspiration, words of encouragement, upliftment. So we do that, and that's a series of six two-hour sessions. Um, and there's space for some more people, should you wish to join me. If every two weeks is too much. I also have a Saturday trance development circle. It is on the third Saturday of every month, and it is from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. UK time. And it's the same thing. You're connecting, you're working, you're practicing. I will answer your questions. If I don't know, I'll sit with it and think about it and get back to you. But we're allowing ourselves an opportunity to use your spooky weirdness, your trance mediumship for something. There's no point going to a course and then not doing something with it. Why waste your time? Give the spirit world a voice. Learn to be confident. Learn to be accepting of that beautiful gift that you all have. It takes just a little bit of dedication and commitment on your part. And the spirit world will respond to you in bucket loads. And you will feel things that you've never felt before. You will feel a love that you probably didn't realise existed. And... That is all I can really say. Um, but you need to feel it yourself to experience it. So guys, that's enough about what I've been, I've got planned. Uh, much of it is with Jan. But guys, have you got any questions? Anything that you want to mention? Stuff that you, you love? Stuff that you don't love? Stuff that's bothering you? Tell me. Use the opportunity. Put a comment in there. Let me know what you're thinking. What are your thoughts? 
Although it's getting really tepid now. Ooh. I think I'm better off drinking my water. Okay. Right. Any questions, guys? Anything you want to mention? Feel free. You don't have to, of course. Anything that kind of pe anything that people have said to you that you don't understand, you know, regarding trance, you know, is there, is there aspects of it that bother you, or you know, there are things that you think that you can't do, or you need to do in a specific order? You know, what are you thinking? Because I know I do. You know, when we run these sessions, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of interesting perspectives that seem to be shared. On a paranormal course with Helen, she used the piece of music. I use this to go into an altered state. Shamanic, dr shamanic dreaming. All right. Yeah, Raven, you'll have to share that link if you've got it, if you know what it is. I'm always interested in new pieces of music that kind of take him into a zone. And that's a great resource. It is a great resource. So sometimes you'll sit there and you'll listen to a piece of music and someone will say, oh, this is a wonderful piece of music. Listen to it, it's amazing. And you close your eyes and you sit back and you think, oh my goodness, it's like nails scratching down a blackboard. And of course you don't tell them that. But you're welcome, Lena. I'm happy to help in whatever way I can. And look, it wasn't that long ago that I was a rookie and maybe I still am. But... We love the same thing, so why not try and help? Um, yes, yeah, so you find that piece of music sometimes, especially if you're talking about shamanic, doing shamanic stuff, so journey into the you know like the upper world, the middle world, and the lower world, or you're in the middle world, but the upper world and the lower world. Often you need a fast and energetic beat. You know you're kind of talking about three beats a second, and what that does is the brain follows the brain is like trained by the music in the sense that if you were to measure your brain wave the up and the down it will be going across the screen at a certain rate when you put on the fast playing music the the brain the brain wave starts to match the beat of the music so that music itself is like a way of training your brain to say right now do this get into this state of receptivity and there's there's so many ways that you can do it and I find that if I want to get into a trance state I like the much slower melodic just easy listening pieces of music or even just silence and so explore music I mean Steve Newton has many different um, tracks that will evoke and will encourage um, a state of consciousness. Some of it has a specific purpose. So, you know, I think it's stephennewton.com, his website. So you can download this at least three albums. You know, so we've got Dream Walking, we have um, Painted Faces, and then we have, Steve, my brain is going. What's the other one? Stand in Circles. And all of those, there's a particular track on Painted Faces, um, Whispers on the Wind. And I listened to that for the first time about, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine years ago. And it still just takes me to that place, that nice place. And so for me, that track is perfect. It takes me to where I need to be, where I feel I need to be. Um, Val, that's a great one. Wardrunner, who I go to see next Sunday. They're a Norwegian folk band, um, but they their singer Einar Selvig. He, they sing about or and his band. They sing about the the runes, the Nordic runes, and that music is very evocative. There are the you know the horns. There are the traditional like the um, lyre the traditional um, Nordic lyre musical instrument is similar to a harp in a way, but much smaller. And just the vocals, very evocative, very, um, it kind of takes you to a space. It feels very primal. 
when you connect to it and you just listen to it and it just makes you go, whoa. And well, it does me. It doesn't take much to make me go, whoa. <laughs> but there you go. That's probably more says about me. Um, so I'll, I'll try and find some links um, to like Wadrunner, to Steve's music. And, and by all means, guys, if you have some links of stuff that really works for you, share it with us. Why not? Share it with us and allow us to know... Um, you know, what works for you and maybe it'll work for us. You know, it's about sharing that experience, isn't it? Um, this, uh, there's some brilliant stuff. Got something else to show you. Here we have a book. This is by, it's weird doing this in the mirror. Trusting the Intelligence of Spirit by Helen DeVita. Wonderful book. Let's look at what we have in here. Let's look at some of the chapters. Is there chapters? There isn't chapters because it's not that type of book. That's just me being a bit thick. Now, this is Helen's journey. Stuff that she has experienced. Her awareness, her thoughts, her opinions on doing your spookiness connecting to spirit and you know examples that she's had things that she's learned lots of wardrobe on youtube yeah laney you're absolutely right there's loads of stuff loads of stuff that is a great book so again helendevita.com go onto her website there's this book too where are we so this is as it says exploring the arts of the spiritual assessment so you know if you're kind of working with people and you're trying to pick up on guidance to help someone on their path Helen has written a wonderful book lots of tips lots of not tricks lots of advice you've gotten two of her books but haven't got to read them yet Avril which ones have you got then have you got the intelligence of spirit and yeah, so yeah, let's come back to me with that one, Avril. Which books have you got? Because there may be a book that you've got that I haven't. Damn it. Laura has a question. Um, how many times a week would you recommend to sit for trance? Three times a day. No, I'm kidding. Not three times a day. Now, it's a good question. So, I think if we get caught up in, I need to sit for trance every day um, at 7 p.m. Um, for 30 minutes or an hour, there will, it can become like a chore. And it shouldn't be, it should be something that you love, that you sit down and then you go, yes, I'm gonna sit with my spirit friends, we are gonna connect, we are gonna make this connection and we're gonna sit in love, in harmony, set our intention make it a beautiful experience so when you when you feel that need when you feel that um, that real sense that it's something that you need to do then by all means sit don't be prescriptive about it is what I would say Laura allow yourself to sit when it feels right and if you say to yourself you know tonight is seven o'clock I'm gonna sit and you get in the room and the day has been a real stinker and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I hate that person at work, it's been a terrible day. And you sit down and you close your eyes and you just feel that stress within you. Then I would say, don't sit to connect to your spirit friends. Sit in the power. Sit to relax for your own benefit. Heal your own soul by allowing yourself to relax. Because what's in here, what's in your mind, is what you're then connecting to your spirit team with. So they don't need to feel the nonsense that goes on. I would say every couple of days, I think, is, is fairly reasonable, isn't it? Every day will become like a chore, but every couple of days, and when, let's get onto the subject of how long. How long do we need to sit for? Five, ten minutes? Fifteen, twenty minutes? In the start, you sometimes think that more is better. If I sit for longer, I'm going to learn more. It's not necessarily the case. I think little and often would be a good analogy to use um, because 
there's, there's a lot of experience that you're gaining and sometimes you need time to reflect upon that. So if you're sitting, you know, for, for a long, long time, really regularly, um, you need to, sometimes you need to kind of sit back and think, what did I experience then? You know, what was it that they showed me? What did I feel? What do I understand or didn't I understand? Um, and so use your intuition. Some methods will feel better to you. So what was that? Um, I hope that answered your question, Laura. Let me know if it didn't. So Linda said, I've got the spiritual assessment one really helped me in a great reference book to use. Yeah, she's a clever egg, isn't she? Lena, I blend with my speaking guide every morning, but I do this six or seven days a week because we both love it and I feel very cool to do it that often. If I feel like I need a day, if I take one, perfect. So you're using your intuition, Leia. You're saying to yourself, do you know what? Feels good. I'm going to connect. You do your stuff and it's what's right for you. And that is absolutely what you have to do, Lena. You do what's right for you because you know you better than anyone else. Um, so I think that's a great that's a great mindset to have. Yeah, definitely Kev said, definitely true, mate. Sit in the power. You're you're giving the spirit well something to work with when you sit in the power. Now, for me, there's two purposes. I kind of sometimes I sit in my own power just to say, I close my eyes. How do I feel today? What has today been like? Where's my aches and pains? What's happening in my body, in my mind, in my spirit? This is just about Andy. We don't need to involve the spirit world. Other times I sit. I visualize this great white light above us, the universe, this, this eternal power. And I visualize it coming into my body, going into my heart, expanding outwards. And I sit to bring it into me, to imagine that this light body, this spirit body, is being replenished, rejuvenated, call it what you will. We're connecting it to the universe around us. And we're giving ourselves... A, a greater platform to use by breathing in that energy, by visualizing it coming in and allow yourself to feel that calmness. And then when you're ready, you can then say to your guys, guys, I want you to come into this space that I've created. I want you to connect to that light, that love, that power within my heart space. And I want to feel your presence. So do that and allow it to be what feels right to you? I think that's, you know, that's what I would say. Linda, you sit in the power every morning for 10 minutes. It really keeps you in balance. Again, you know, Linda, you've been doing this many, many years. You know, I'd be preaching the, to the converted there, you know, but sitting in the power, it is a good thing to do. Because if I said to some people, how do you feel right now? You'd sit there going, oh, I don't know. You'd scratch your head because you don't know. We, we, we want to connect to a spirit world. And then we say, well, I don't know if I'm connected to my guide or not. But the thing is, you probably don't know what your own energy feels like, if truth be known. You sit there and you think, am I connected to my team? And if I say, well, how do you feel as a person right now? And if you then scratch your head and say, I don't know, then you need to spend time, in my opinion, and I'm not an authority, please don't think I am. I know that I'm not. So spend some time asking yourself the question, how do I feel? Then, when you know how you feel, you're going to know how it feels when you connect to your spooky friends. Laura said, I don't think I sit in the power enough. This is a good reminder for me to, for me, thank you. Yeah, look, there's not a, there's not, a, a, um, there's not a law. All time spent with spirit, Laura, is, is going to be valuable time, isn't it? It's time that you're dedicating to building that trust, that connection, that awareness. You're getting stronger and stronger. You, you know, you're really, you're giving your spirit friends something more to work with. And isn't that really what you're after? You know? So that every time you sit with them, you learn maybe just a tiny bit, a tiny bit extra. But you're adding that tiny bit onto what you've already learned. So it's a continuous adding process of this is what I knew this morning. 
now I knew now I know all of that plus a little bit more and then a little bit more and before you know it everything seems to be very straightforward and you understand more so Raven yeah a nice way to start start the day and end the day so that's good yeah you know it's kind of like a meditative process um, and I think that can only be a good thing so whether you're whether you're doing it for healing for allowing the spirit world or just saying I need some time for me today has been a, a you know a hectic day kind of it's like a release valve isn't it you know so we're just undoing the screw allowing that tension to flow out of the body and just go ah this is my time and then allow yourself to you know continue the rest of your day or you know hopefully get a peaceful night's sleep so anyone else got any other questions anything that you want to speak about stuff that bothers you or or what anything at all anyone got a question that you want to talk about or me mention is there anything i haven't mentioned that kind of is on your mind excuse me while i take a drink okay i end the day by sitting for me yeah absolutely val you guys are the most important person you know in the in the process in some ways you know if you if you look after yourself you strengthen your awareness you give yourself a pat on the back and accept that sometimes you just do some really good stuff and you need to say do you know what i'm happy with myself and i'm happy with what i've done and you just allow that allow that to come into you know your your mindset how about protection what to speak about it okay so it's a great question kev kev has said how about protection so i'm assuming that you're meaning you know sort of speak about protection so there's there's varying varying thoughts and some people you will go to and you will say do we need to protect ourselves and i guess yes yes you do and i'll i'll explain why from sort of you know experience that you know i had in one of the classes that um that i was running you know uh, that was related by one of the people so if you say to some people do we need to protect ourselves kind of and no so it is about setting your intention so when you're going to work with the spirit world we could have the mindset that well my guys in inspires are very loving they're very this very that and very the other and they wouldn't let me connect to something um unpleasant let's just leave it at that unpleasant but is everything out there really all love and light is it all about you know oh we're like angels playing our harps and everything's love and light and you know we just go on our merry way the spirit world will sort it all out but will they where does your free will come into this where does your personal responsibility come into it where does the fact that you are as in charge of this whole process of connecting to the spirit world as anyone else where is the fact that some people by process of thought can direct a negative thought at you they can do that it can happen now as valor says you always connect to the highest and the best what do we mean by that so you would when you're before you connect before i run any of these sessions you know whenever i'm going to work with the spirit world you know i will say that you know tonight i'm doing a reading or a trance session i would like to connect to the highest and the most loving unconditionally loving spirit energies that are there i do not want to connect to anything that does not love me unconditionally and i do not want any of my students if that is the case to connect to anything that is not loving me unconditionally 
but I also mention that in the circles and in the sessions and say, when you connect, you are connecting to unconditional love. So what is that? So let's use Val for an example. So I say to Val, Val, I want to, I want to work with you. I want to, here's, here's a, here's a reading. I'll do a reading for you, Val. Val says, oh, that's very nice. It's very kind of you. And, and she says, what do you want for this reading? I said, oh, nothing at all. I just want to do it for you because I love you. I want to do it for you. It's my gift for you. I want nothing, nothing at all. So that is doing it with unconditional love. That's a very simplified you know, example. But it's doing it for unconditional love. But if I say to Val, I want to do a reading for you, Val. And she goes, oh, that's very lovely. Thank you very much. And, um, but if I do the reading, will you do me one as well? And, you know, she may well say, yeah, of course I will. But that is wanting something in return, isn't it? That is set in a condition. And the condition is, if I do something for you, you do something for me. That is not unconditional love. That is like you could say it's a reciprocal, um, you know, process. So Lainey said, I have a gatekeeper that keeps me safe 24-7. Yeah, but you need to empower that gatekeeper, as I'm sure you do, Lena. Um, so we have that free will, don't we? Now, let's say we're walking down the street. You see a crowd of 100 people. Let's get very simplistic about this. You see a crowd of 100 people, and then God clicks his fingers, and all 100 people pass through the spirit world, and they're on the way up to the pearly gates. Now, such is life that not all of those people will be very loving, unconditionally loving. They will have baggage. They will have stuff that is negative. There will be stuff about them, about their energy, their aura, their, their essence, their spiritual essence. Now, death does not wipe the slate clean. Death is a transformation to a different form, but it is not a complete transformation of your spirituality, your essence. It doesn't give you carte blanche to say, oh, we've gone away with the old physical body. Here we are, spooky body, clean slate, off we go. If you had predilections to, say, alcohol or drugs or whatever else. Now, that does not change if you are in a spirit body. You can still hanker after, you can still crave the negative aspects of life by attaching yourself to people that have that same predilection that are still alive. So if you really love a drink, you would hang around places where other people are that really love a drink. And if you're in a state of inebriation, there is the opportunity for them to take advantage of your weakened will, your weakened resolve, because you are less likely to say, no, back off. You're more likely to say, yeah, whatever. Now, you do not want to connect to anything that isn't loving. Simple as that. You want to connect to people that love you no matter what. People whose, whose mere presence within your aura your spiritual essence is a positive and uplifting experience. If it does not feel positive and uplifting when you connect to it, disconnect. Do not connect to it. Empower your guides. Say to them, guys, I wish to work with trance tonight or with a one-to-one -one reading. I want to connect only to those that are motivated by unconditional love. Now that phrase was used by a good friend of mine and I've never forgot it. Because he, he impressed upon me when I wasn't aware of its importance that we kind of say that. We do that and we think it. We become that thought. We do it. So I hope that kind of makes sense, um, Kev. So what did Laura say? Laura, yes, I have something on my mind last year. Just before Christmas, I had a dream, but it was real. It wasn't just a dream to me. It was walking through a sunny field and there were... And there were crows eating dead crows, but I was young, walking into the light. I woke up and I haven't stopped thinking about it since. It didn't feel negative. Yeah. 
Well, I'm glad it didn't feel negative to you, but there's, I mean, there's, maybe there was symbology in it, you know, maybe, you know, there was a personal reference to you, um, to you, Laura. And yeah, it's an interesting one about crows eating dead crows. But obviously, crows are a carrion, carrion bird, aren't they? So that they, you know, they do eat um, the dead, but I wouldn't have thought they ate their own. So that's an interesting, um, that's an interesting one. Quite intrigued by that. Yeah, but we are human and we can forget. Yes, we can. We can get caught up in the kind of the love and light brigade and say, yeah, everything's love and light. And that just isn't the case. So this, this workshop that Jan will be doing, dealing with the dark side, um, it's, it's going to be an interesting one. Because it really felt, I, I, I said to her, I really feel that people need to um, need to have an understanding of this. So Jan said, yeah, sure, we can do it. Um, it's about rebirth. Well, so that's great. Look, Kev walks the shamanic spooky path. So, yeah, thanks, Kev, for that suggestion. And it is, I guess that rebirth would make sense with how you're doing with your trance as well, um, Laura. You know, there was that great sense of kind of moving forward with it. And we've seen that in the classes. So, you know, Kev, thanks for sharing that, buddy. Also, messengers. What, what's that in relation to, Lena? Just tell me what you mean with that. I'm a man so that you know things are a struggle. Okay. Where are we? We should, Linda said, we should protect ourselves daily as we go about our business, not just when we work with spirit. Yeah, something that I do, and I don't, I can't say for definite that it works, but I feel that it does. So, like, if I'm going to a really busy place, I don't particularly like really busy places like the city. So, what I'll do is, I kind of visualise my energy. I kind of visualise it coming in to, like, really hug my body. Because I found, like, I went in a crystal shop once, and um, I <laughs> went in the crystal shop, and because I hadn't thought about how I would feel in there, I went in there, and after about 10 minutes, I actually felt physically sick. And because the energy within the crystals, the, the power of all the different crystals, I was sensitive to. And I said to myself, I, I need to get out of this shop because it's just overwhelming. And I went out, just walked a little bit down the street, vanished that sensitivity to the energy to the power within those crystals that affected me so what i do is i kind of visualize my energy coming in close to my body so that i become as desensitized to the energy around me as excuse me as i can be and so that when we're connected to spirit we push the energy out don't we to become more sensitive so you're kind of turning up your spooky weirdness volume. So when we don't want to do that work, let's bring it in. Let's turn the volume right down, our sensitivity right down, and say this is sitting in front of the TV, drinking a beer, just chilling. We don't need to have that sensitivity. So let's pick and choose when we do it. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Crows and ravens known as messengers. Yeah, oh, cheers, Lena. No, that makes sense. So, um, yeah, I bet they talk to you. <laughs> I haven't said that. I've got some here. Where are they? Oh, they're behind me. I've got some, I've got some labradorite and some clear rock quartz behind me. So sometimes when I sit in my cabinet, I've got my seance cabinet just here. Where is it? Let me, there we go. That's my seance cabinet. Um, and so when I sit, Sometimes I do sit with a crystal in my hand and and I I kind of feel the connection with it. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Let me just alter that. So I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I do sit with the crystals too. Uh, Laura said, thanks Kev, rebirth sits well with me. That's a good explanation. You put my mind at rest. See Kev, got the answers buddy. So Linda said it does work because you set the intention when you draw down the light of protection. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, you've all got probably, um, you've all got routines um, that you use that work for you. So please do it. Please, 
you know, please share your experiences and kind of there will be ways that you have learned through your experience that you think to yourself, actually, that's a really good way of achieving whatever X, Y or Z. So, Lena, I use hematoid quartz to raise the vibration in my trance space. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to have a look at that one and see what that does. Because all those crystals, they, they have little, they will have nuanced um, attributes, don't they? So you would use a particular crystal. I'm not really into the crystals in a big way, and I don't have the experience to know, you know, exactly about them. But um, Palo Santo, I burn that. Yeah. So I would, yeah. So I would be sitting with the crystal, and I'd be kind of feeling um, its energy, feeling, you know, what it did to me as I sit, sit in that space. And you know, I will look into the meanings of certain crystals, and if there's something that I want to work on. You know, I'll have a particular crystal and I'll use it like that. So crystals are great. I like using them. Um, luckily, I don't have a, a crystal fetish because it can become a very expensive experience. And um, but um, joking aside, uh, you know, they're really valuable. You know, they have a wisdom and an intelligence, a power. Um, why not use it? You know, why not use it? It's, it's there for you guys to use. So, you know, there's lots of resources, but has anyone got anything else that you want to mention, um, you know, before I let you go? Because I'm just talking for the last hour and 10 minutes and you guys will be getting bored. They have frequencies. I use them based on the need and the frequency of that stone. Yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense, Lena. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, so I, I guess that's kind of, what I said or what you know I felt that there is certain qualities that's the word I was looking for certain qualities that each stone has um, that can help you to achieve you know maybe a certain space or maybe protection or an enhanced ability to do a certain a certain act maybe you're you know you're using it in a healing aspect as well um, Raven said when at work I would walk in and use the expression tool up and the intention is to protect myself from the negative living. Yeah, exactly. So look, there's great there's great wisdom in that, isn't there? So you have like a, a method, a catch word, a phrase. So you're walking into your work and you're saying, right, tool up. And that is you setting that intention. It is as simple as that, isn't it? You know, so we don't have to go into the whole, I need to open all my chakras in a specific order. I need to close them down. You know, I need to say, you know, 10... Hail Marys and our fathers. Um, yeah, look, Kev, it's great reconnecting with you, bro. And um, Kev is, you know, really into his shamanic path. Great deal of wisdom with Brother Bear, as we like to call him. And um, it's really good to kind of hear you sharing your thoughts and opinions, buddy. So thank you for joining me, if you need to go, that is. But obviously you don't have to. So, guys, any other questions? Um, otherwise, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, you've heard enough from me. Um, is this being recorded or can you please send me the various dates? Um, I th think that's a good question. Well, I can send you the link to this recording. When it's finished, I think it just goes to my, my um, Facebook page. Not the um, spooky page, just my normal page. Um, really appreciate you hopping on there. Great to see you in the class workshop updates are great. Thanks, Lena. You're in the US of A, so thank you for joining me. And um, it's uh, nice to connect with you. Val, thank you for this evening, she says. Is this been recorded? Yeah, I just answered that. Dope. Um, yeah, so I'll send you the link, Val, so that you can watch it again. And guys, so if you want to join some sessions with me, or if you know people that are weird like me, because I am weird, please do send me a message. Um, there's been a really positive experience. Um, it's really fun. And it's nice for me on a personal level just to share my weirdness with other people like me. You know, we need to find our tribe, don't we? I think that's what it's all about. So, any questions on the stuff from Helen DeVita, I will put um, links either in this post or on my page to Helen's stuff. I will put dates times prices for all of the stuff that I'm doing in conjunction with 
Jan. And of course, if you're interested in my stuff, you can send me a message and I'll be happy to talk to you. Um, also, before we go, there's I do one-to-one -one tuition um, for trance, um, spiritual assessments, readings. If you're interested in any of that stuff, if you want to have sort of personal tuition, we can tailor it to you. If you block book sessions of six, then I offer a 20% discount, which I think is pretty generous if I do say so myself. A lot of people like to do that and they like a one hour session to do stuff that just you want to do. So it's just about you. And um, I think we'll leave it there. Raven, Laura, Lena, Val, Kev, to all of you that joined me this evening, thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you for coming along and great questions. Um, Linda too and everyone else. I don't want to lose anyone. Where are we? Anyone else there? Okay, so whoever has joined me, thank you. And I will end the video here. Have a great rest of the day or evening or afternoon or morning, wherever you're listening to it from. Take care. Catch you later. See you guys.